Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a volcano update and a seismic swarm analysis of Mount Hood. Dozens of quakes have kicked off in the last 48 hours. And according to this article coming out today, 28 small earthquakes recorded on Mount Hood on Tuesday. More than two dozen small earthquakes were recorded within a six-hour period on Mount Hood Tuesday. Many occurred within minutes of one another. According to the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, the string of earthquakes began with a three-magnitude earthquake at 2.35 p.m. The next largest of the 28 earthquakes recorded on the mountain had a magnitude of 2.6 and was detected just a minute after the first earthquake at 2.36 p.m. These two earthquakes were recorded by the USGS, however, dozens of smaller earthquakes, some of which had a magnitude as low as 0.2, were not recorded. Now, the first earthquake with a magnitude of 3 originated just south of the Mount Hood summit. The second earthquake was near Timber Ridge Lodge, and that is the main quake in question, 3.08 kilometers north-northeast of Government Camp, Oregon. And you can see that most of these are clustering near the crater, the caldera. There is the uptick all layered upon each other, so you can't really see it, but you can see 34 earthquakes in the last 30 days, all starting two weeks ago. So there is an uptick here at Mount Hood. Now, although not a common occurrence, short-lived earthquake swarms at Mount Hood have occurred near the summit in the past including November of 2013, September and October of 2014, May of 2016, and the most recent with an M3.9 earthquake and seismic swarm occurred on June 5th, 2021. Is this an uptick? Well, it is certainly a grouping of increased activity in the last two decades. And that would be what we'd be expecting to see one of the Pacific Northwest volcanoes waking up. And certainly we have another. So there's been now five seismic swarms since 2014 at Mount Hood. What do we know about it? Well, it erupts at VEI-2 in the past. Not a spectacular erupting volcano like Mount St. Helens at VEI-5, but this one can cause lahars and problems because tons of people live nearby. Now, let's do a quick geologic summary Mount Hood or is Oregon's highest peak, and it forms a prominent backdrop to the city of Portland. The eroded summit area consists of several andesitic or dacitic lava domes, and major Pleistocene edifice collapse produced a debris avalanche in Lahar that traveled north down the Hood River Valley and crossed the Columbia River. The glacially eroded volcano has had at least three major eruptive periods in the last 15,000 years, the last two occurred within the past 1,800 years from the central vent high on the southwest flank that produced deposits that were distributed primarily to the south and west along sandy and zigzag rivers. The last major eruptive period took place in 1781 when growth of the Crater Rock Lava Dome was accompanied by pyroclastic flows and lahars down the white and sandy rivers. The Sandy River Lahar deposits extend to the west as far as the Columbia River and were observed by members of the 1804-1805 Lewis and Clark expedition shortly after their emplacement. Minor 19th century eruptions were witnessed from Portland, and we just showed you that last VEI-2, VEI-2, who knew? Now you do. Now here is the simplified volcanic hazard map of Mount Hood, and if you live in any of the regions of the East Fork of the Hood River near Parkdale or in Brightwood or Welches or Rhododendron, and this would be down on the Sandy, these are areas that could experience volcanic mud flows, potentially far-traveled mud flows all the way to Camas and Troutdale in Washougal, potentially. So, we've also had lahars down the White River, all the way down. Now, luckily, not a lot of cities along that river. But there are people living along all of these waterways. And, well, you should take heed of the warning map. Now, why are we bringing this all up? There may be a connection between these terrestrial volcanic eruptions 
and solar activity. And a new paper coming out from Valentina Zarkova, we are going to discuss this Friday uh, when we interview her on the topic. Now, in the paper, they compared frequencies of volcanic eruptions in the past 270 years with variations in solar activity. And what they found was a very strong correlation with the solar cycle. Here is the data set in question. VEI-4s are the stripes up here. VEI-5s are less frequent here. VEI-6s here and 7s. And you can see the only occurrence of VEI-6, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, and 7 are back here during the Dalton minimum. We have VEI-4, 5, 6, and 7 occurring at the Dalton minimum. During the centennial minimum, we have VEI-4, 5, and multiple VEI-6s. And what we should expect during the modern eddy minimum should be somewhere between the centennial minimum and the Dalton minimum where we see multiple VEI-5s, probably four or five in the next few decades, a few VEI-6s, probably one or two, and maybe one VEI-7. This would certainly be a game changer as far as the climate on Earth. And according to Valentina's paper, well, the curves are lining up to spike at the end of the solar cycle. Now, let's see if I can find that summary. Uh, just bear with me. So the conclusions of the paper are quite stark. The strong correlation recorded in eight cycles of SBMF after 1868 suggests that possible physical mechanisms of volcanic eruptions are linked to the increased solar activity features, e.g., the solar background poloidal magnetic field of southern polarity. So that is what is potentially affecting these earthquakes. The solar background poloidal magnetic field of the solar southern polarity. Now, energetic particles of solar wind and solar flares and large-scale shocks produced by interacting solar magnetic loops in the toroidal, toroidal field may also be kicking this up. So if there is anything to be said, we could be looking for an uptick in volcanic activity coming soon. That would be solar max of cycle 26. Now, before we dive deep into it with Valentina, we're going to just end it here and keep it simple. What they determine using the eigenvector is that the maxima of volcanic eruptions are shown to occur during maxima of solar activity cycles with the southern magnetic polarity that can be associated with increased disturbances in the geomagnetic field. That means they only occur every other cycle. Because every cycle is just a half of a polar solar reversal, you need the full hail cycle, two solar cycles, or 22 years to get the solar cycle in that southern magnetic polarity. So that only happens once every other cycle. It's not this solar max, so we're not seeing any large volcanic activity happening now, VEI 6 or 7. We should expect it in cycle 26, between 2031 and 42, probably during the peak, closer to 2035, 6, and 7. So that is what the data shows. And, well, you could take it with a grain, or, grain of salt or heed the warnings. Because volcanoes will erupt, the question is not if, it is when. And according to the data, there was an increase in volcanic activity here, not here, and there will be another increase at solar max of cycle 26. So stay tuned for more updates and the full interview with Valentina Zarkova coming up Friday night on Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And that is a boom to knowledge. If you have any questions or follow-ups before the interview, leave them below and we'll get at you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this video so our channel can grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe.